بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful لا اله الا الله لا اله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household all his companions, may Allah bless them and bless every single one of us. May he grant us goodness and may he bless the messengers who came from the very beginning, those who were sent by the Almighty, for indeed in their lives there are great lessons for every one of us to learn and it is only deserving that we send blessings and salutations upon all of them and we ask the Almighty to grant us goodness and to protect us from evil. His Excellency, the Ambassador of Sri Lanka here in Qatar and other distinguished guests brothers and sisters in Islam if we take a look at the growth of Islam we will come to note that at the time of the Khalif Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an the greatest growth was achieved so much so that if we were to take a pencil and outline the nations today where Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu as a khalif of Islam ruled we will count 35 countries we will count 35 countries of today no mobile phone no internet no telephone no telex no fax no loud hailer or sound system no form of technology yet he ruled 35 countries so I want to pause there for a moment and take you through one or two points only how this was achieved and how it is mentioned that even if there was a person harming an animal Somewhere along the Euphrates, they would be worried about Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an getting to know about it and doing something about it. Yet today people get away in the United States of America with rape after rape, murder upon murder, fighting and killing, robberies, stealing and so on, unabated. Sometimes nobody knows. Yesterday in the news, I came across some piece which was very interesting. In the midst of the most advanced country in the world were people, some girls who had been kidnapped for 10 years. Yet at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, things like that were unheard of. May the Almighty grant us all sense and may He make us from those who can be humanitarian and those who believe to start with, those who understand and realize the purpose in life and those who can take a page from those who preceded us. This man was a man who stood for justice, so much so that once the Romans had sent a delegation who entered the city and asked for the Amir, Amirul Mu'mineen, which means the leader of the believers. They were looking for the most beautiful home, the place that perhaps would be decorated the most, the biggest. And they began to ask, where is the house of the Amir? 
they were led to a small little home which was below the average home of the general mass at the time. When they got there and knocked the door, they were told he is not here. Where is he? The afternoon siesta. He is not available somewhere. So they kept asking until they were led to a tree beneath which a man was lying down. The man lying down beneath the tree. They said, is that the Amir? They said, yes, this is the Amir. Amir al-Mu'mineen. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, ruler of 35 countries. And amazingly, when he awoken, they said a statement that went down in history. What is the statement? They said, O oh Umar, you have ruled and you were just, so you feel secure, so you can sleep under a tree. Look at the fall. You're a ruler and you seize the opportunity to serve your people in the most just manner. And therefore, you feel very secure and safe. And so, you're sleeping under a tree. Amazing. This is something we learn. When we stand up for justice and when we serve the nation, we have nothing to fear. When we stand up for justice and serve the nation, we have nothing to fear. And I have seen this in some countries where some of the cream of the crop would walk in the malls up to this day. And they would greet people and visit the homes. And they wouldn't mind. No one would know this man is actually a top-notch politician. But we are seeing less and less of such people. May the Almighty grant us more of them. So when we serve people, we have two types of peace. One is the inner peace. And one is the outer peace. Sometimes you do have haters. And you know, nowadays the haters increase because of lack of education. I spoke about it this morning at a different venue where I said, many people dislike others because of lack of education. They don't know that we are sometimes different diversity. What was mentioned by doctor. Allah has created us different sizes, different nationalities, different races, different tribes. Not so that we can use that to start hating each other, but only so that we can recognize each other and we have something interesting to live by and to live for and to learn from. Because if every one of us had to look the same, it is possible for Allah to do that. It was always possible for him to make entire creation or should I say all of mankind looking exactly the same. But that would become so boring because each one of us would not go by name. We would go by a number. Take a look at Toyota. When they make 13 million Corollas, how do you distinguish them? By the number plate, subhanallah. By the number plate. So we'd all have little plates and we'd say 31, a man would get up. 32, another man would get up. 35, a lady would get up. How boring. The reason that Allah has created us looking different, different colors, races, parts of the globe and so on to create diversity in order that we would know one another, recognize people, appreciate the differences. There are some well built people in West Africa, for example. And there are some people who might look a little bit smaller in stature, but they have a mind of a genius. Take Japan, for example. This is just an example of the cuff. Not to say we are not geniuses seated here, inshallah. I think we all should be. Notice how very quick I was to say that. But the reality is we tend to forget that this diversity to benefit from one another. If Japan did not exist, I think, and I'm, I stand to be corrected, but we would be somehow slightly more backward, perhaps in technology, maybe. Because... A lot of what is connected to advancement today comes from Japan or Korea or somewhere down that side. Sri Lanka is not so far. Remember that. So we need to know this and understand and appreciate what we have 
been blessed with. Some people are blessed with physical strength and some people are blessed with mental strength. Some people have both. Some people have spirituality within them. If you take a look at the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one day I was asked a question, where were they based? I said there was no base for them. There was no specific base to say the prophets were based here, all of them. They were sent to different places, but some of them we know and some of them we don't know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran as well, that we have sent so many messengers, some of them we have related to you and others we did not talk about, but there are so many. And Allah says all the nations we sent to them messengers and people to remind them. So the person asking me a question said, well, why is it that all those that are mentioned were somewhere near the Middle East? And this was a young, a young boy who asked me the question. What answer am I supposed to give? So I just said to him, do you know, the Middle East is like the middle of the globe. When things beam, you know, beams everywhere. You have the airlines of the globe. The best connections are those from the Middle East because they're just in the center. Whether you want to go to the east or the west, you can actually use the center and then go elsewhere. And he looked at me and he smiled. He said, that makes sense. I said, but that's not the proper answer. Allahu Akbar. But the point I'm raising here today is when Allah has placed someone in a strategic position, they need to realize their value and of what service have they been to those around them. Today we have the Sri Lankan Majlis, mashallah, and we have gathered here for this beautiful symposium in large numbers. And what I'd like to highlight to you is you are known across the globe. Do you know that? Not just in one or two countries. I heard moments ago that, you know, it is known even in Sri Lanka. No, across the globe, there are pockets of people who know the work of the Majlis. SLMQ. In my hometown, there are some who know the work. And they know what's happening. Why? They have had some form of interaction, something somehow. Today we, we are in the age of technology, where one little tweet can inform millions of people of what's gone on. Subhanallah. People ask, what is that? And then you say, this is what it is. And what do they do? They go to one sheikh, the biggest sheikh of our age. He's known as Sheikh Google. So they go to that sheikh and they ask him, who are these people? And the sheikh responds. He has many replies. And they will definitely see the good that is being done. The question I have for you, what have you done to contribute? What have you done to enlighten others to contribute? You have your friends. If every one of us, makes it their business to invite within this coming year 10 more people to do the good work. I think we would be 1000 next year, perhaps more. It's not impossible. I'm sure we have tens of thousands, if not more of Sri Lankan expats. And I'm sure there are so many other nationalities who have similar good work. And the expats are in their millions, mashallah. The amount of work that's happening is amazing. The beauty of it is that each one is assisting. And I hope each one feels that they are part and parcel of this cog that I spoke of last year. I still recall what I said. Huge machine with a cog that has teeth. Every one of us is a tooth. If you think, well, what I contributed 10 real here, it's nothing, you know, one tooth missing, the whole cog stops. The cog is messed and the machine may stop or it may be affected. You find when it gets to that position, it jumps again. Why? Your 10 real are missing. Subhanallah. It's not only about finance. Sometimes it's about time. Sometimes it's about volunteering to do something humanitarian. Sometimes it's about conscientizing people and educating. Sometimes it is about instilling values in your own family members so that you can create the leaders of tomorrow. So it's not just something minor. Look at Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. What was his concern? Was his concern, okay, let me line my pockets now that I'm sitting in this position. I can strike a deal with these people and those people and, you know, get 10% out of everything or perhaps more or less. Amazing. That's our language. It was not his. That's our language. We are quick. To say, you know what, let me make a thing or two. If it is permissible, it's not wrong. But there is a broader concern.
that is far more valuable than wealth. If you can conscientize people and you have a genuine feeling and each one contributes in a way that he or she can, then you have definitely contributed to humanity. And why humanity? Although you might be talking about specific groups of people because others will see the good work you are doing and they will try to emulate, emanate, subhanallah. What happens? They learn from you. The reward goes to you. Now the inner peace and contentment that you feel at night, you don't realize it's because someone in Philippines has benefited from a Filipino council that learned something from the Sri Lankan majlis. Can happen. Probably has. So this is why we say, when a person does not have foresight, they do not see the importance of such gatherings. And they do not see the importance of cooperation and coordination. Why? They are narrow-minded. They live for themselves. So when there is a problem, they are on their own. Today, may Allah protect us. If we have one of us, brothers or sisters, affected by a major health crisis, I guarantee you they will have tens of people rush to their assistance. Guarantee. Why? If they have been concerned about others, the day they were in need, everyone else is rushing towards them. But when we all lead an individualistic life, do you know what happens? I am sick, nobody knows. I am ill, I die. I will be in my home for five days. The neighbors will send the garbage men to come and see what the stench is all about. And then they will say, there is a dead neighbor of yours. We don't even have links with our own neighbors. And this is weakness that we are facing today on the globe. Forget about neighbors in our own homes. We sometimes don't even meet our children because of how we work and how they have begun to operate. You know, with the age of Twitter, people are tweeting. We've become birds, bird tweeting. And when we tweet, what happens? We fly high. Phew. You're flying very high. When you're flying high, you don't notice your parents who are down on the ground. You don't notice them. Why? I'm busy tweeting. The only thing you notice is what you need in terms of the crumb. You know, the crumb. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Really, may He make us people who can benefit our children and offspring and have a lot of foresight. But if you greet your neighbor every time, once in a while, you send a little bit of food, a little gift, perhaps a little bottle of perfume, mashallah, perhaps a message when they've gone on holiday, they will come to you or you will go to them. You know what? Just keep an eye. I'm leaving, you know, for a month, so on. Uh, this is the home. I've turned everything off. Wow. Community development. Starting with just a genuine feeling. So tomorrow, when the road leading to your apartment happens to develop a pothole, Let's say in one of the countries similar to mine and it happens to have harmed the vehicle of a neighbor four or five of you may get together and say you know what let's do something about it let's repair it are you going to work for the council well if that's the case in a lot of countries the councils take so long so long because they have a similar attitude in, in a lot of cases like us the only time they start working hard is just prior to elections to show people that we're doing the work. But prior to that, sometimes it takes them so long to just fill a little pothole on the road. So if we have this proper attitude of caring for one another, just like we are taught from the very beginning, as Muslims, the early generations, you know, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was the one who invented the post system. He had horsemen who would go from city to city on a regular basis, taking what? Taking mail and taking things and messages. From, you know, at that time, a lot of them were by word of mouth and so on. He developed a system that operated and worked within these 35 countries. Today, it's become something like EMS and DHL and so on and so forth. Do you know how it started? People may admit, people may not admit. Go and study the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was one of the first, in fact the first, who began recording important matters of the judicial system, of what was the goings on of the nation, the appointments and so on. Everything recorded. Who started that? A nation that were known as unlettered, in a few years, they were highly educated. Amazing. 
He was bothered about the education of his people. And not just the Arabs, but as far as the nation went, east and west, he was bothered about the cleanliness, teaching them the etiquettes, teaching them what is good for them, the development of the sewer system and so on, the start of it. It may not have been completed at his time, but it was definitely discussed and put into practice to a certain extent. To be honest, without coordination and cooperation, we will not achieve anything. We will not. Or should I say, we will not achieve anything meaningful. When we coordinate and cooperate, we can do a lot. Brings me to one point. Some people have an attitude to say, well, these people are asking for donations. I'm going to give you an example off the cuff. These people are asking for donations to improve the drainage system. I think that's not important. We need to improve the schools. So I'm not going to donate. That's the attitude. Why? Because they have asked for something which I think at that moment is not important. I don't want to take part. To be honest with you, we should be taking part for as long as it is something important. Even though we might not find it as important right now, people might say there are more pressing issues. Then raise your issue with the right people. There will come a time when they will now start collecting for that or they will start addressing that situation. The issue that you considered prime will only be brought to the fore when you raise it as a patron or as a person who has shown genuineness. Today, for example, Sri Lankan Majlis, say I would like to achieve something in the schools. I want a, a pamphlet to go out in the schools to educate the children regarding something. So suddenly one of the brothers comes or I go to one of the brothers and I say, you know, brother, I'd like to achieve this. If you are a person who's been constantly contributing and you, you've had meaningful presence, immediately they will take it seriously. Look, brother, we take it seriously. As soon as we can, we're going to look into this matter. If you're a person who's never shown face, they might tell you, brother, at the moment we are busy with this other project. And if you are ready to assist, please assist. You say, I'm not going to help. Why? It's not according to my massage. You know, it's not according to my temperament. I don't want it. Well, if that's the case, that is short mind or should I say short sightedness? Because if you were to say, OK, brother, at the moment you are involved in this, I'm going to help. I'm going to assist. What will happen? The turn will come when what you have raised is also going to come. And it's going to happen. This is foresightedness. This is intellect. This is the way we can serve the nation. Not every time will the priorities in all our minds be exactly the same. They're going to change. But collectively, we can deal with one issue and then another issue and then a third. And we will come to yours as well. Alhamdulillah. But if you show that you have a feeling, a genuine feeling towards what others have considered priority, there will come a time when people will show a genuine feeling towards what you have considered a priority. This is what it is. This is why we take a look at the nations. Look at what happened at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. I obviously do not have much time to go into every detail, but I've just dangled a little carrot. You may purchase the books from the bookstores here. The life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. It is in two volumes. And go and see what he achieved. Wallahi, world leaders are reading the books. Politicians are going through his system. And they are seeing and taking a page from it. Something somehow will definitely benefit you. Like it benefits myself and everyone else. And therefore, we need to learn the humbleness of this man. He was in a top position. Not one day did he stand with his nose high up. He was a humble man. Who did not miss his prayers. He took his time to walk around at night to find out what was going on with his people on many occasions. And do you know what? He discovered a lot that he would have not discovered had he not done that. So in our workplaces or anywhere, even just as a nation, find out what's going on back at home and contribute positively, not negatively. Some people contribute negatively because that is their nature. So when there is a problem, they fuel the problem and it becomes worse. And some people are sharp. They think solutions. They think positive. How can I contribute in a way that we can resolve the crisis? Like I said, 
a lot of crises where there are minorities of Muslim or even majority of Muslim and minorities of others. A lot of social crises are connected to lack of education, lack of understanding, lack of having learned the issue of tolerance. So we need to showcase not only Islam, but we need to showcase what we stand for. The fact that we are humanitarian and Islam teaches it. How are we going to showcase it if each one of us is an individual? No cooperation, no coordination. In that particular case, people won't even know that you're a Muslim or they won't even know that you are affiliated with this group that is doing so much good work. In fact, they won't know you because you're not affiliated anyway. Subhanallah. This is why we say it is very important to affiliate. You know, the group effort is far greater, far greater. I'd like to end with the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu and we've actually learned it. Some of the scholars say it is an athar. Inna shaytana ma'al wahid wa huwa minal ithnaini abad. The devil has a far greater grip on a singular person. And when you become two more, the, grip, the less the grip of the devil upon that group of people. And this is correct whether it comes to traveling on your own, whether it comes to doing things on your own. There are greater blessings to do things collectively and it makes life much easier. Look at Salah, the prayer, for example. When you're reading all on your own, you know what? It requires a greater effort. But when you're five, six people and they say, let's pray, you will pray even if you were slightly lazy. You make sure you get it done. And when you have a habit of going to the masjid, it takes longer than what you would have done at home. But you did it with prayer. And you don't even realize that this thing has been achieved. So take that example and apply it in a community. In our own community, when you do things collectively, you're much happier. When you gather once in a while, give it importance. When people say, look, the majlis is calling for a meeting, or we have an iftar, or we have some program here or there, give it importance. Don't say, nah, these guys, they're always like that. One day you will need the fact that you are all a collective group. You will need it one day. So don't be foolish to say, no, let them keep on thinking, you know, they've been going on for the last years or how many ever years. And you know, there's nothing there besides talk. There's no action. Relax. Those type of statements have kept you away from goodness. Rather, and I always tell people, you know, we speak at school sometimes and some people say, you know, uh, these Muslim schools, you know, there are some schools that have a Muslim bias, which try to accommodate people. Uh, you know, to perhaps dress appropriately and so on as Muslimin in some non-Muslim countries. So some people don't send their children there. And when you ask them, brother, why don't you send your child? They say, these Muslim schools, the education is low, you know, the standard is very low. So I normally have a standard answer. I say, if children like yours who are extremely intelligent were to come there, I think the standard would go, you know, up. Which means we need you to contribute. You are so intelligent. Come on, come on board. We need you. We need your contribution. And we need you to say something and do something. Don't just sit back and start pointing fingers. Get on the bandwagon and start moving. Inshallah, the train will go in the right direction with you on it. So this way, Inshallah, we will be able to serve humanity at large. And we will be able to really live by what we stand for. And we will be able to understand that we have this legacy that has been left for us. And we need to leave a legacy as well. So inshallah, if we have a broad understanding and we learn to love one another, serving inshallah one another, we will be able to achieve much more. I really would like to congratulate the achievements of the Sri Lankan Majlis. And at the same time, I, I would like to invite others on the globe as well who may perhaps uh, view this lecture a little bit later uh, to do some work for the communities, uh, for the nations, humanitarian work across the globe work of peace and justice and the work of assisting one another so much so that we can inshallah spread our wings to being of assistance to the other creatures of the almighty which include inshallah the animals and the plants as well as marine life and so on it goes on and on we have these teachings and we definitely need to get there if you think it's not important to be kind to marine life you're wrong Look at the oil slicks across the globe and how they destructive they have been and see. Perhaps it might not be your field, but there are some who know what it's all about. Just like how there are some who are veterinaries who know what kindness to animals all about and so on. We 
haven't even started being kind to fellow human beings. And when I say this, I'd like to draw a line. I'd like to underline the word family. Whilst we are busy working, do not lose track of your own family. Never. If the core is correct, inshallah, everything else will build around it in a correct manner. If the core is wrong, what do you expect besides destruction as time passes? May Allah bless us. I still have a lot in my mind that I'd perhaps share with you, but we'll keep it for the majlis next year, inshallah. Barakallahu feek wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So much so that if we were to take a pencil and outline the nations today where Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, as a khalif of Islam ruled, we will count 35 countries. We will count 35 countries of today. No mobile phone, no internet, no telephone, no telex, no fax. No loud hailer or sound system. No form of technology. Yet he ruled 35 countries. So I want to pause there for a moment and take you through one or two points only. How this was achieved and how... It is mentioned that even if there was a person harming an animal somewhere along the Euphrates, they would be worried about Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an getting to know about it and doing something about it. Yet today came from the very beginning those who were sent by the Almighty for indeed in their lives, there are great lessons for every one of us to learn. And it is only deserving that we send blessings and salutations upon all of them. And we ask the Almighty to grant us goodness and to protect us from evil. His Excellency, the Ambassador of Sri Lanka here in Qatar, and other distinguished guests, brothers and sisters in Islam, if we take a look at the growth of Islam, we will come to note that at the time of the Khalif Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, the greatest growth was achieved. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. La ilaha illallah, la بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa taala, sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his entire household. All his companions, may Allah bless them and bless every single one of us. May he grant us goodness and may he bless the messengers who